Hello everyone, TLSG here. Today we have a pool 3 build for Barge Sinister created by Rai Guy, or aka Hype Man, and it is a spicy one. Let's go ahead and jump in. Alright, so jumping straight in, we have Lufty. And looking at what we have in our hand, we have a couple of really, really good plays for turn 3 for Bar Sinister. So yes, we could drop Yondu and that's going to destroy some of their cards. But... We might also go with a different approach. We could drop Yondu and Carnage on three, and if they have initiative, then even if they send us goblins, then we will destroy it with Carnage. We protect some of our downside. Um, I think what we want to do here is we'll just go ahead and drop our, our Black Widow onto the board. Um, we can... We can eventually do debris, which is going to fill up the entire rest of the board with rocks, which is going to be phenomenal. We just have to get an advantage early so that we can so that we can easily or freely do that. Let's go ahead and drop both Yondu and Carnage. That's going to take care of three of their four. That's going to take care of three of their seven remaining cards in their deck. Um, we're also going to just drop Widow's Bite onto the board, and then we'll we'll kind of see. We'll kind of see what gets destroyed. We'll see what everything, how everything kind of works. And so it does look like they are sending us two green goblins, but the good thing about that is they're going to have three green goblins stuck on their side of the board because the way green goblin works, it's going to send it, and then, then it's going to duplicate it and fill up that side of the board. So since we already have two cards, it's actually only going to send us one. And we're going to destroy that one. They're going to have negative nine power in Bar Sinister. That is the kind of risk reward that you run with your Green Goblin. Is that sometimes it's not going to pay off for you. And so now we're going to have eight power. I think a ten power Carnage that remains on on this lane, which is insane. Um, and then they're stuck at negative nine. Even if they have an Odin, by that point we're going to have this one capped out. Um, uh, honestly, I think I think we go for a lead somewhere. I think we go for a lead in one of the other lanes, and then we go for and then we go for capping out the 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 rest of the game. We go for the we go for the win. Um, so if we can get a lead in let's say Wakanda or or New York, all we have to do is drop debris. That's going to fill up the rest of this board. It's going to fill up the entire map, which is which is insane. Um, it's one of the fav my favorite things about Bar Sinister is that you can flood the board incredibly easily. And so right now we do have a win. Or we right now we do have the lead in Wakanda, um, hmm. and so it's it's kind of all or nothing here. We either we either lean in and and hope <laughs> hope that they don't drop a card into Wakanda, which could happen, um, or hmm. or we could always drop our hood and then next turn we could do debris and a, a demon token, but I think that's going to be a little bit too little too late. Let's go with a let's go with a. <laughs> Let's go with the Prage. We're going to go with the Prage method. We're going to go with Debris. Uh, that is going to send three Debris rocks onto the board. That's going to fill up here, 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 and here. And we're just operating under the impression that we don't think they're going to overcome this negative nine power. And so if we can get lucky and they don't play in Wakanda, right now we have a two-point lead. It would take three points here to win it. Oh, they do play a card there. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, so that's why, that's why uh, Mojo ends up being so strong, is that... Whenever this gets for, oh my god! <laughs> oh no! All right, guys. So um, that's it, right? Like, there's nothing more that they can do. They can do carnage and destroy this, but getting to 19 off of one card, I I don't think they can do that. And then I think we're fine if they let it play out the rest of the way. Then the leader play comes in. They just let it play out for fun. Oh my gosh, we countered their counter at every step of the way. Absolutely insane location, insane game. Let's go, let's jump into another one. All right, next up we have Dino, and hopefully we are in for a pretty good game. Sadly, I recorded one that was a very, very close game. We came down to a bluff and I forgot to hit record. I was, I was, it, I was celebrating and I switched over to stop the recording and was just deflated i i forgot to hit the record button <laughs> so we have dino we're gonna try to relive our glory days it, it was an okay match it came down to a read at the very end and a bluff which worked out for us it worked out well in in that in that scenario so they have a lot of one cost cards they discard their green goblin interesting what are they running 
Um, this is a lot of low power cards. And so we can do, it, mm, it depends. We know that they're not running Green Goblin now because they have discarded it. In their hand, they only have two cards. We do have Carnage as a backup, uh, as a way to clear up the Bar Sinister lane if this fails. We could also do a Yondu in a cart. All right, next up we have New Donk City. And I swear the last three videos in a row, I've had absolutely insane name matchup. So New Donk City, thank you for <laughs> thank you for keeping it fresh and fun for us. Um, the first location is Tinker's Workshop, which gives us an extra energy. So we're actually going to push Mojo there. Uh, the fact that they have Sunspot does isn't great um, because then it's it's going to be able to grow over time. What we wanted was a was a path to be able to drop a, a debris and be able to outpower them as a result. But instead, I see a combo that I kind of like. We can do a hood and a carnage. Um, if they try, they're, they're going to have initiative going into that turn. If they have initiative, they're going to send us two goblins. They're going to keep three of their own, and we're going to get a couple of hoods. We're going to get the carnage to clear the lane, and we're going to get a pretty good advantage from it. So let's go ahead and snap. See if they buy it. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next turn. And we will do the hood carnage setup. Unless maybe maybe we do Yondu if we draw into it. Um, but those are some of our really good starting combos. And then that way if they're trying to do the green goblin. Or if they're trying to counter the green goblin play. Um, and then we do have limbo. But with this deck... We're not going to we're not gonna fall into a limbo. I, I mean we could. But most of the time we're going to retreat. Or force the opponent to retreat by that point. Because we're going to force the board to be completely capped out in full. Now we did draw into Green Goblin. That could send them a full board of four Green Goblins. But looking at Sunspot, they could be running a low curve. I bet they are I bet they're respecting the bar sinister. There are so many like combo plays and ways to maneuver this location. I assume that they are running something for the bar sinister. So instead of trying to sneak my Green Goblin and maybe we get it, maybe we don't. We're going to go with a Hood Carnage, hope that they do a Green Goblin. Ooh, so they do a Storm. It's a little upsetting. I'm not, I mean, I, I, that's a that's a little upsetting. Um, they, I guess they are tired of the Bar Sinister shenanigans. And they go ahead and they just, they just pull the Audible and they go ahead and make it where it's you know, no longer a thing. We can do Carnage to push whatever they play into the Flooded Lane out this turn. We can do a Demon to really capitalize on that location and, and cap it out ideally um that could be pushing too much power here i think wherever whatever they play here goes we might drop a polaris to pull the sunspot over and we try to cap that lane out outside of what they're trying to do because i think with a sunspot in a storm they're probably playing something that tries to go wide um so like a wong a dr doom uh something that can push power across the entirety of the board uh, okay, so Jessica Jones, maybe they don't. Uh, maybe they're just going with a, a decent uh, kind of combo piece of a deck. And so we, I mean, even if they do go wide, we can we can overcome two Doom bots here, which is going to be pretty decent. I think we go with a Polaris that, that, that will pull their Sunspot over, kind of force this one to be a, a little bit harder of a lane to for us to win, but also for them, it's going to be harder for them to push enough power into Tinker's Workshop. Either that or we go ahead and try to fit in a green goblin we actually know they're not going to play into this lane this turn but if we can fit in a green goblin and kind of clog up their board in in ways that they don't necessarily want us to uh maybe we can find some upside where there's not upside otherwise okay so the jessica jones does come down they send us a green goblin we're going to send them a green goblin in, in return and so it does balance out but their sunspot is pretty large okay so the daredevil's not great that actually gives them more information than it gives us because now they know they can potentially draw into their other pieces just a little bit easier. So this one, this one's gonna be a tough one. Um, I think, I think we're gonna use a Polaris to pull their Sunspot over. Uh, we're gonna drop Black Widow as a way to make sure that they don't draw on that final turn. We're gonna need a little bit of luck in in the Tinker's Workshop. They do have Doctor Doom. Interesting. So now they could do an Odin to re-trigger it. Um, which could be pretty bad. We would still win this location, but this one is the one that I am concerned with. Now, we do get Doc Ock. We could force them to pull and cap out this location, but we didn't force it into a full lane either. We we didn't, oh no, we didn't position this well. We're not going to be able to get Mojo regardless. So it comes down to a Doc Ock gamble. They could do an Odin, which would re-trigger Doctor Doom. Uh, it's going to be a gamble. We're going to hope that maybe we pull into 
dumb kind of tech card that's not meant to be here, we're probably going to lose this one. But we're going to let it play out anyways. We'll give him the we'll give him the the fist bump. Uh, we'll give him the thumbs up. I'm going to go ahead and tell him I'm losing, but because I'm an, I'm an honest Joe, uh, let's lock it in. They do a leader to copy our Doc Ock, which is not great. Um, so it pulls into our debris, so we get three extra power versus theirs. Uh, but it's not. It's not. Oh, wait, it is going to be enough because that now forces our mojo into capping out that location. Leader stabs you in the back. That is not a good leader, New Donk City. Not a good leader for you. It's a great leader for me. Let's jump over into the next one. That was phenomenal. All right, next up we have Ninju. The first location is Novaroma, so that does dr let us draw onto some of our additional resources. We now have Hood and Viper. We can always set that up. I think we do. I think we set that up. If Bar Sinister comes up, maybe we pivot and do something else a little bit faster. But otherwise, I think we just lean into the regular disruption that doing a Hood into a Viper is going to cause. And then we do have our Green Goblin. We have some pretty decent kind of tech cards or counter cards that are going to make it less advantageous for them to uh, play cards necessarily where they want to. And so we send them the hood. Would they play an Angela? That's going to get buffed up pretty big pretty quickly. Um, We can send them the Green Goblin here. The The issue that I, I start kind of having is that uh, this lane is that we're, we've split the power push that we're doing almost want to do a maybe a maybe a juggernaut into xandar if they make the mistake of dropping too many cards here we can push them out into other lanes hopefully over into negative zone where they're all going to be impacted by that negative three power oof we got the read wrong we should have went with the green goblin they probably oh a bishop interesting uh very very interesting so we can now do a polaris which will pull either their angela or their hood over into a into a demon play that still leaves us open for like a green goblin and a mojo or a or a mojo and a debris uh, as a way to kind of push some additional power onto the board so we do get their hood that comes over so that's going to be a negative five lane immediately Ooh, ninju has been putting in the work on these inkified versions um the all gold and the inkified versions are absolutely phenomenal they've been putting in some solid grind time for that uh, that is a lot of respect for me my friend unfortunately we are going to snap uh, as a result so they have bishop they have angela that that kind of predicates on them playing a lot of cards into those lanes and naturally playing those cards we're going to dock ock their cards into negative zone one it'll drain them of resources and then two they can't get a bishop bonus if they can't play their cards and so let's pull in it could be bad it could end up being absolutely you know horrific but it could also win us the game into a point where they have to retreat Okay, so the Onslaught comes in, and then the Blade will force them to discard their Rocket Raccoon. That is the last of their resources. They now do have a Blue Marvel, but they don't have the Onslaught to buff it up further. That's going to make it a little bit less consistent. Um, we could, we can now do a, a Spider Woman and a Yondu. That should push us in this lane up far enough, and there comes the Retreat. The Doc Ock is really good at disrupting to the point where either you have to retreat or your opponent does and so it was going to rely on whatever they top decked here and so if it was a one cost card a very unimpactful card that's really hard to come up over and around that power and so otherwise they could have done blue marvel and then stacked onslaught onto it we got the upside of hitting the lucky doc ock play so let's go ahead and jump out of this one let's jump into i'd say one more all right next up we have chobits and the first location is Nidavellir. That's always kind of a crazy one. If they have like a, an Iron Man or anything that really helps push a, a large amount of power, it, it can be kind of tough. Um, because then they can elevate the power past what you're able to, um, because you can really start leaning into that additional power that each of your cards get. So instead of that, do we, do we just send a Green Goblin this turn? Maybe we do a Juggernaut? Maybe we hold the Juggernaut. Let's just play. Let's just play Polaris into the Nidavellir location. Um, I doubt it's not going to be able to pull anything, and so I doubt that there's going to be much impact. But at least we're going to be pushing and competing for this Nidavellir power. Uh, holding a Juggernaut could give us some strategic advantage in pushing out any card that they have in Nidavellir, um, and so maybe we get some upside there. We could do the the Yondu into one Viper, which pushes it over. 
I think we just, I don't think we snap. That gives them a little bit too much information that we're excited about this location. Um, but instead, I think we go ahead and just play it. If they have one as well, then we have to look at, I mean, we have initiative, so they will actually cap out the location and have space to play remaining. And so we'll, we'll see. Let's go ahead and go with the green goblin. If they don't go with anything, we're sending them four green goblins. at the cost of keeping one on our side. <laughs> but then the quick retreat comes in. You either love Bar Sinister or you hate it. We've seen some pretty crazy play lines. We are gonna go ahead and end after that one. It was a short one, but it was a fun one nonetheless. We, we had the win in Bar Sinister. We just had to win one other lane after that. And so this has been TLSG. If you liked the video, make sure to leave it a like and a comment down below. Let me know if you wanna see a good mixture of pool one and pool three builds. Hope that you guys enjoyed this. This has been TLSG. Later guys.